Okay, we have another interesting integral today. We've got the integral of one over x squared plus one dx. Okay, this one's kind of inspired out of the comments. I noticed just that a lot of people sort of like the shorter method or they like the quick solution. And oftentimes I like the longer method because I find that we can kind of learn more from that. But anyway, for the people who like the short method, let's just get the solution out of the way. You could just do this by a formula and write down arctan of x plus c. And you'll notice if you do it this way, you can get a solution in like three seconds. You just have to write it down. So, but for me, what I want to do instead is let's do a trig substitution on this. And what I can do is substitute x with hyperbolic cinch of t. I'll go ahead and take a derivative on this, get our dx value. This is just going to be cosh t dt. And then I can also get a value to isolate t, just taking the inverse cinch on both sides. So we can say t is going to be the same as inverse cinch of x. So now we'll just go ahead and substitute on this. What's going to happen first for dx, that's going to give us back this numerator. In the denominator, x squared plus 1, let's write that out with x being cinch of t. This is going to give me cinch squared t plus 1. But now here on this, we can use the identity. This right here is going to be the same thing as cosh squared of t. But because we already have a cosh in the numerator, we can cancel one of these with one of these. 1 over cosh t, then that's going to allow me to rewrite this whole thing as hyperbolic secant of t. Now, going ahead and integrating this, I'm just going to use a formula on this, but I have a few formulas. One of them is when you integrate this, you get arctan of cinch of t. But I think I want to do this in the other form. So my other formula for this, it's going to give me 2 times arctan of e to the t. Then from here, let's just go ahead and back substitute with our t value right here. So rewriting it that way, we're going to have 2 times arctan of e arc cinch of x. And there's a plus c on there, of course. And I can go ahead and circle the solution. The only trouble is I want this to be the same as this. And you notice that this looks pretty different. We've got the arctan, but how is all this stuff going to give me back just an x? So what I need to do from here is just let's clean this up and see if we can get it to look more like arctan of x. Okay, now at this point, I have a couple formulas I can use over here to the right. The first one we have is the definition for inverse cinch in terms of the natural log. So we can use that on this cinch right here. And then we've got the complex definition for arctan, which is going to be useful to try to transform this. So first, we'll use this definition of inverse cinch. If we plug that in, we're going to have natural log in the exponent on the e. So essentially, like the e and the natural log is going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with this part. So using that, we're going to have 2 arctan of just x plus square root x squared plus 1. And then next we'll take this and rewrite it using this complex definition. But in order to simplify this so I can just write less, let's do like a little substitution. For this whole mess right here, I'm just going to call this y. We'll come back and back substitute later, but right now it's just going to save me some writing. So plugging it all in, we have our 2 here. This is going to become half i natural log. And our input here is going to be 1 minus i. We're going to use y instead of x here. And this is going to be 1 plus i times y. And then, of course, we can multiply 2 times a half and get 1. But I'm not going to do that because what I want to do instead is I want to take this 2 and bring it into the exponent on the log just using log properties. And that way we can square this out. So we'll have this 2 here like that. Because really I'm going to need to simplify this part. So let's see if what happens when we square this out. It'll come kind of over here. If we just multiply this out, we're going to get... 1 squared is just 1. Squaring the last part, minus i y, that's going to become minus y squared. And then multiplying out the middle terms, this is going to become minus 2i y. And then same kind of thing in the denominator. This is still going to be 1 minus y squared. And then when we do the middle terms, we're going to get a plus 2i y. Then notice here we have this, I want to simplify this fraction. We have this 1 minus y squared in common. Well, let's find out what y squared is because we have our definition of y here. y is going to be just x plus square root x squared plus 1. If I square that out, y squared is going to be, square of this term is going to be x squared. Square of the last term is going to be, we just drop the square root, and we get x squared plus 1. Multiplying out the middle terms, that's going to give me 2x square root of x plus 1. But here we have x squared plus x squared. Let's just combine these into 2x squared. And so this is our value for y squared, but what I want to put back in here is 1 minus y squared. So that's going to be pretty easy. We just need to add a y and reverse the sign and everything. But when we do this, we're going to have 1 minus, distributing the minus sign to everything, 
2x squared minus 1 minus 2x squared x squared plus 1. But then this here, 1 minus 1 is just 0. And then with what we have left, I can factor out a minus 2x that we have in common. And we can write it as minus 2x times x plus squared x squared plus 1. But this thing right here, this is just y. So I can put this back as minus 2xy. Okay, so now that we have this value, minus 2xy, we'll plug it back in here. So I'm going to have minus 2xy minus 2iy. And then here, again, minus 2xy plus 2iy. Then I think I can factor out a minus 2y here in the numerator. So when I do that, this is just going to become x plus i. And then same kind of thing in the denominator. We factor out minus 2y. We're left with x minus i. Cancel out the minus 2y's. And so now we're just left with x plus i over x minus i. Let me clean up the board and we'll see if we can simplify this a little more. Okay, this is looking pretty good, but I want it to look more like what we have back here in our definition we used earlier. What I can do is multiply by 1, multiplying by i over i here. When you do that, you have ix. i times i is going to be minus 1. Then same thing here in the denominator, ix minus 1 times minus is going to be a plus 1. And then all I want to do, so you'll notice the denominator is already the same as this. In order to get the numerator to be the same, let's factor a minus sign out front, and then I can reverse the sign here. And let me just rewrite this to make it clear. So we have the minus sign out front. Reordering this is 1 minus ix over 1 plus ix. And so now what we have here is identical to what we have there. The only thing we're going to need to deal with is we're going to have this minus sign. So let's take this, we'll plug it back into the natural log and finish it off. Okay, now from here, this is really similar to what we have here. We just have to deal with the minus sign. What I can do is we can look at this as a minus 1 being multiplied by this. With log properties, I can break this up into two expressions with addition. So like the first one, we can have half i natural log of minus 1. And then for the second one, again, distribute in the half i times natural log 1 minus ix over 1 plus ix. Well, this here might be a little disturbing, but this is actually just a constant. We can kind of manipulate this if we want. For natural log of minus 1, for minus 1, I can use Euler's formula. I can use this definition and write minus 1 as ei pi. Then if you just take this out in front of the natural log, natural log of e is just 1. So what we end up here is half i times i pi. i times i is just minus 1, so this whole thing reduces just to minus pi over 2. But at the end of this whole expression, there's going to be a plus c. So having a constant value here, this doesn't do anything to change the expression because this can all be absorbed in the plus c. So this piece right here goes away, and this is all just a constant. And then at this point, what do we notice? This piece right here, this is exactly this. This is going to be just arctan of x. So putting it all together for my final solution of this, we just get arctan of x plus c, and that's it. And of course, we matched our solution we found earlier. It was just a slightly longer method, a few more steps, but I think it was well worthwhile. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.